What's up, guys? This is Josh from Casket Comics. I will be your host for this episode of Back Issues. Um, what is Back Issues? Uh, Back Issues is a new episodic show I'm going to be doing, and it'll pretty much be just me breaking down um, earlier volumes and kind of going through the story with you of um, just comics to get you caught up onto the current issue. So if you have, you really want to read, or you really want to um, catch up on a story, and maybe you want to start reading it, but you haven't read the back stuff for it, the back issues for it, and you're just like, you know, kind of just don't have time for it, then you can check this out. I can give you kind of a little bridge from first to last. So um, this one we're going to start with, Something is Killing the Children. Uh, we're going to start with volume one, which is the first five issues. Um, great comic. Uh, there's so much I can say about it. Um, really good horror comic. Definitely, if you're into that kind of stuff, bloody gory. Has some really cool uh, art fight scenes. Um, I'll be showing you a few throughout this uh, video. Um, but yeah, uh, also has some amazing variant covers. I'll pop some up here by some amazing artists. So um, with that, guys, I guess let's get into Back Issues, Episode 1. Well, Something is Killing the Children, Volume 1. All right, so... I kind of look through the book, give myself reminders of the walk you through it. Um, so chapter one of this issue, issue one, chapter one. Uh, we kind of open with an introduction to our main character, James, uh, being asked truth or dare from his friends. Um, and James kind of chickens out and chooses truth. Um, and his friend asks him what was the most scared he's ever been. And uh, when he tells him, James pretty much tells him the story about a week ago. Um, and in that story, he tells him about this creature he had seen, uh, outside of his house when his uh, father was gone at his sister's soccer practice. And, um, his friends obviously kind of called BS on it. And, uh, he tells him it's true. He's like, you know, it lives, it's in the ravine down from my house. It lives there under the bridge. And, um, so, you know, like they, when they don't believe him, he starts to ask them truth or dare. So you get kind of the feeling that. Uh, he's going to dare them to go out there and see it. So, uh, yeah, there's just kind of the first page. I won't do this with every page, but um, great art. Um, and then we cut to uh, James in police custody. Um, he is being interviewed, bloody shirt, and um, they're asking him, you know, what happened? And he's kind of mumbling to himself, like, I, the monster wasn't real. I made it up. So, like, he, you know, he's trying to prove to himself that this thing wasn't real and uh he even says like i swear it wasn't real and when the cops ask him what happened next um he pretty much he tells them that you know he got separated from him and fell on a root and so he kind of fell and got behind from the group and the next thing he knew he heard him screaming and then we cut to something is killing the children the title of the book um we then pick up with our uh heroine uh two weeks later um, Erica Slaughter, who is the main character, and we get to see Erica um, kind of after a fight. You'll come to learn that she's pretty much she's a monster hunter, and um, she's pretty she's pretty much she's beat up, but she you know she got the job done. Uh, she gets a call from Saint George on her phone, and ends up being the group that that she works under, and they pretty much send her on another mission, and. Um, yeah, she takes it and, you know, it's about 16 hours away from her. So then she heads on the mission. Um, we pick up again with James as he goes to school and is kind of bullied. Uh, a lot of people say he killed his friends and it kind of starts a fight. Um, doesn't kind of, doesn't quite come to blows. Kid grabs him, but, uh, obviously it ends up with next cut to James being in the principal's office because he yells at the guy and curses. Um, Principal seems to be his friend. He's just kind of asking James if he's all right and what to do about it. And James pretty much says, like, you know, I'm not all right, not even a bit. Uh, we get some exposition that there have been uh, more deaths of children since his friends. Um, and he just kind of heads out. You know, he goes out of the principal's office kind of just with a really, like, depressed demeanor. Obviously, he saw his friends get killed. So, um yeah, then we cut to Erica Slaughter getting off a bus. Kind of have a little exposition with a bus driver. Where he's like, somebody should do something with all these missing kids. And Erica's like, yes, somebody should. We get a shot of Erica seeing the board of all the missing children in the town. 
Um, then you follow James going back to the hotel because his house is kind of a crime scene. So he's staying there. His dad tells him he's going to be late. So just to let himself in. And then he comes into contact with Erica. Um, Erica kind of like, uh, not really grills him, but just kind of, you know, finds out she knows she has an idea who he is, that he was involved with this. So she kind of, uh, talks to him and asks him what really happened and that she's like, you know, I'll believe you. I don't care what, you know, what you, what, how crazy your story is. And then, um, he kind of, he tells her the story of after he, after he tripped, you know, he hears his friend screams, follows him to his friends and, um, his friends are pretty much butchered. Um, and he gets blood on her. He's freaking out. Um, his friends are asking for help. They're in pieces. And then he sees the monster uh, killing his friend. So this is pretty graphic. Um, so yeah, but yeah, so it's pretty cool. Um, of course, Eric, Erica thanks him for the uh, story, knowing how like hard it is for him. Um, and she pretty much tells, he gets another phone call from St. George, letting them know that she has a class E7 at Archer's Peak, Wisconsin. So the town they're in is Archer's Peak. Um, and then pretty much she says that, you know, she tells him, she's just straightforward with him. She says, I'm here to kill it. And then James asks, can I help? And that's the end of the first issue. Um, we pick up with chapter two. Uh, we start following another new character, Tommy who um, his sister is, his little sister Sophie, is one of the missing. So um, you get some talking with him and his mom. Um, his mom likes telling him she, he's face facts, Sophie's dead, whereas uh, Tommy has more of a hopeful demeanor. And um, he's just, you know, trying to do everything he can to help find his sister. Um, and as he walks out of the house, he hears a noise and says, you know, hello, is anybody there? And then you get this shot of the monster there. And you realize Tommy can't see it. So this is where you're starting to get a little, you know, a little more, okay, this is kind of a fairy tale style thing. Monsters, kids can see it, adults can't. Um, we pick up with Erica and um, James again, going to a diner that Tommy just happens to work at. Um, Erica kind of grills Tommy and tells him that she needs to borrow a booth to store her stuff in. And she'll give him $50 a day if he keeps it out of you know sight, out of mind. Um, and he kind of reluctantly takes the deal. Um, and then Erica brings out her octopus plushie. Uh, you kind of see it a little bit in that image right there. Um, it's more of a lot more iconic things in the book. Um, and when her, when, um, James asks her about it, she just pretty much says, we don't talk about the octopus. Um, and she has all this map of the town at Kinko's and stuff. So she lays the map out on the table and, they start, you know, kind of going over stuff. And um, James kind of makes a comment of, you look like you've done this before. We get this really cool panel shot of Erica fighting through a bunch of her different missions. And, you know, blood, gore, all that good stuff. Um, and then, so she gets some more information from James. Um, the other waitress that comes to wait on them goes talk to Tommy. Um, Tommy thinks it's kind of weird that Erica's talking to James and what's going on. So uh, Tommy goes to approach him, and as the, he does, he hears them uh, talking about his sister, and he tells him, yeah, like, I'm her brother, because they're trying to pinpoint where the missing children lived. Um, and then Tommy kind of has a little freak out about it, you know? I mean, obviously, they're talking about his sister who's missing, and um, Erica sends James outside with his bag, her bag, but before he does, he drops it, and it reveals a knife. And, um, Tommy instantly thinks the worst of like, you know, you did something to my sister. You are the person who's doing this. Uh, he goes to grab Erica. She pins him to the table, backs off, tells him she's out. Um, she gives him the money, tells him he can keep it. And Tommy, of course, throws it back at her and tells her to get the fuck out. Um, sorry for the language, but going on the book. Um, then you get Erica kind of just like, uh, she talks to the group again, knowing what she kind of has to do. Um, and she sends James on his way, telling him, you know, I'll get back with you uh, when I go to do this. But for now, I've got something I have to do alone. And um, she brings out, she goes to a motel where obviously um, the group that she is funded by reserves her room. Um, she goes in the room and she sits the octopus plushie on the bed and it actually speaks to her. Um, she's getting information about the monster from it. She's pretty much saying, you know, it's a class E7. I need you to think on what kind of monster this is. And it agrees. Um, 
Obviously, the sheriff shows up a little while later. Um, I did leave out Tommy actually calls the police at the end uh, when they're leaving the diner. So, sheriff gets called. Um, hotel manager or motel manager says that he's been hearing strange noises from overnight. Um, you get this cool shot of the sheriff coming to the door and he sees a shadow of like this eldritch octopus thing underneath the she's a shadow and then it's gone in a second he just kind of chalks it up to it's been a long day he opens up and asks erica you know he says he doesn't want any funny business and she says there's nothing going on in here officer and then the last page you get this awesome shot of which is what seems to be the problem of the i guess like uh the spirit a spirit monster coming out of the octopus that once again you know only she can see at this moment so Sheriff doesn't see it, so it's really cool. But that is issue two. Um, chapter three, we pick up with a little girl hiding in a closet, um, you know, saying that she doesn't believe in monsters, but unfortunately, the monster busts down the closet and is chasing her through. And as she runs through the house, she sees more and more dead bodies of children who have been killed in her house. It looks like kids were having a sleepover. Um, She's, you know, she gets cornered by the monster and says, no, please. And then it cuts to one of our other characters, Henry. Um, his, he lost his son, and so he's kind of dealing with the grief, talking about his son in a bar drinking, and of course, you know, the bartender wants to cut him off, and he asks for one more, the bartender says one more, and, you know, we'll, uh, get you a cab. At the same bar, we cut over to Tommy and his friends talking, and, um, they're asking him, you know, like, if he, if he thinks the sheriff's actually gonna pick her up, and he says, you know, I, I hope they do, but if, you know, if they don't, I'll do what I have to do. Um, then we cut to Erica being in police custody. Um, we have this really funny shot of her driver's license revealing her for, name for the first time fully. It's Erica Slaughter. Um, and the cop obviously doesn't believe it, considering he says that the ID is um, <laughs> uh, printed on a piece of paper. It's not even uh, actual physical ID. And she kind of like comes back with, you know, oh, well, social security cards are printed on paper. And he was like, yeah, but this isn't a social security card. This is a driver's license. And he says, you know, it looks like it was made at Kinko's, which we get an early callback to Erica telling um, James about how he she had um, made the map. Uh, from a Kinko's. So you get the idea that, yes, yeah, she did make this into Kinko's. Um, so she pretty much um, kind of trying to talk back to him while he's talking. And um, she pretty much walks over to his board of missing kids and asks who goes missing first. They kind of catch them off guard. Um, and they kind of get into a little shouting match. Um, and he pretty much, you know, tells her, children are dead, Erica. Like, this is a bigger thing than what's, you know, what, what, what do you think is going on here? And she says, that's why I'm here. You know, and he kind of uh, is a little bit stunned, but he, she says, you know, in a minute you're going to get a phone call from somebody and you're going to let me go. And then I'm going to make this issue stop. And then when I do, you're always going to question, like, well, well, what happened? But it might drive me nuts some nights, but you'll know that the kids are safe. And um, they were just then one of their other uh, cops walk in. And he, you know, he asks Erica, is this your phone call? And she's like, no, I don't think so. And it ends up being that the, they found... Uh, five more dead children. And so um, he goes to put it in the drunk tank, but then kind of rethinks it and uh, lets her go, you know, saying like, you you are not a harmful, I don't think, but stay in town. And she's like, you know, I'm going to be in here until it's over. So he ends up sending in one of his other police officers, John, to kind of uh, keep an eye on her, wherever she's going. And of course, um, when she goes out, James is waiting for her on a bench. He heard she got picked up by the police. Um, she, they, they are walking and talking and she realizes that like with hearing the information about there being five more dead children that, uh, the class E seven they had predicted was, could not do that. Like it was, it's way too big. And so, you know, she gets mad. She's talking to the octopus plushy and it kind of, um, once again, just like the monsters, um, for with this one, only she can hear it at the time. Um, and obviously, even though the kids can see the monsters, um, adults can't. But as far as the octopus, it seems like Erica's the only one that can hear this thing. And it's talking to her. Um, and it tells her, you know, it's more consistent. The pattern's more consistent with a type B, a skewer type, than a type E, which is um, obviously more dangerous from what she you get her reaction. Uh, James kind of sees her talking to the octopus and is like, you know, if you have anger issues, you can talk to real people. And she pretty much tells him to shut up. And it's the first time we see her, like, kind of have some, you know, kind of have more emotion. And uh, she walks away, but he approaches her and says he's sorry. And she's like, you know, with this new, um, with this new information, like, we're going to need lots of weapons to take care of this thing. And that's how the second issue ends. Um, 
So then we pick up, and or sorry, third issue. Then we pick up and do issue four, which is funny. You get uh, them shopping at House Depot, which is just great seeing them do stuff like that. Um, and we see Henry from the bar is actually working there. And um, Erica's talking to him about, like, like she needs chainsaws that are... <laughs> Um, something that can get snagged and cut straight through, you know, it's pretty gory stuff. And he kind of, she kind of throws him off a little bit. Um, but you know, him, him being, he's a good salesman. He, you know, shows her, he's like, I guess this job, this model will do the job. So he kind of puts her, you know, with the right chainsaw, um, cut to Tommy, uh, going to his dad's trailer. Obviously his, his parents are divorced. Um, his dad seems kind of like a deadbeat and, uh, he just kind of, he's talking to him, he gets, kind of comes there, just kind of a weird conversation between him and his dad, and then you realize that uh, it really was all for just Tommy to steal his dad's gun. Um, then we pick up with uh, the sheriff at the crime scene with the coroner, who is actually his brother. Um, so we meet the two brothers, the sheriff and the coroner, which is really entertaining. Um, and he's just talking about how, like, the deaths are very weird because it doesn't seem like to follow a mauling from a, uh, a uh, like uh, animal but it also doesn't seem you know concurrent with a human either so and there's also a giant hole in the wall that they see so um he's pretty much like i have no idea what it could be um at that time uh sheriff gets a call from a mysterious man with a glove and a cane. He has the symbol on his hand that we see that we follow back to a couple times in the book. Um, and he pretty much tells the sheriff uh, that he has a problem in his town. He's sorry about what's going on, but Eric is there to take care of it. And when he, you know, he asks, like, you know, is Erica with you? The figure responds, uh, Erica Slaughter isn't with anybody. Um, let me cut to Erica again. Um, talking to James. Um, they're kind of having an argument because Erica, um, is, oh man, she's trying to keep him from going, you know, but he keeps arguing. He pretty much says, you know, like he's, they're I'm talking about the monsters. He's like, I don't, I didn't believe in monsters. These are my friends. It's just like, you know, you don't have to, it's not that you, you believe in them like consciously. It's just as a kid, you know, unconsciously you believe in them and that's how they come to be. Um, and she tells him that, you know, adults can't see them. But she can, when he asks her about that, she says, you know, there are ways. And when he asks her how, she kind of, like, gets angry with him and tells him, you know, like, I'm not telling you that because trust me when this is over, you're going to want to forget one day when you get older. Um, and then she, you know, um, they're, they're going to find the den of the monster. She knows it's by the lakes. Um, once again, he, you know, he wants to go with her and he kind of coaxes her into it. But he says, you promised me when she tries to, like, sway him away from it. And then she says, you know, you can go with me, but when we get to the den, you're leaving, you're leaving, you're leaving. You're not going in, you're staying outside, no matter what. Um, and he promises her, uh, you get a shot of John, the cop following her, uh, he gets a call from the sheriff. Um, the sheriff pretty much says, like, he tells her where the sheriff, where she went, the sheriff says, don't follow her, that's the end of it, over now. I'm kind of like, you know, but of course, uh, the cop, you know, the, the cop's like, nah, man, that's not it. So he, um, gets out of his car and goes to start following him, but gets side, side swiped by, uh, Tommy with the gun and he ends up knocking the cop out and pretty much, or knocks him down. He knocks, knocks him out and he just says, you know, what happens next on you? I gave you guys a chance. You should have locked her up or you locked her up. You should have kept her there. Um, when they get closer to the den, Erica realizes that, that the den is way bigger than it should be. And there's a smell that shouldn't be there. And then she kind of accuses the octopus, saying, like, you know this was, you knew this was going to happen, didn't you? Um, and then, you know, she starts suiting up and pretty much tells him, you need to go over the ridge, take all my book bag, all my stuff, you know, my pack stuff with me. And then we see her, like, take her jacket off, and she has her white undershirt with uh, the mask that she puts on. The mask is kind of iconic. It's a pretty big symbol in the stories. Um, and she gets ready, you know, she goes into the cave and gets ready to fight the monster with a chainsaw. <laughs> and um, she gets in there, she finds the dead bodies, which is not what they she was expecting. Um, you know, she had been under the impression that this monster was storing food. Um, and then, of course, Tommy shows up. And when Tommy, uh, he, he sees all the dead bodies and accuses Erica, he thinks she did it. And he's pretty much pointing a gun at her. And then at the point, 
um, she's trying to warn him, you know, put the gun down, and he just says, not a chance, not realizing that the creature is way bigger than they predicted, and it's behind him. Uh, and that is the end of issue four. Uh, going into issue five, um, you follow James at first. He sees the corpse of a deer, and he kind of has flashes of his dead friends. And in the process of doing so, he finally hears the um, octopus plushie talking to him. And it kind of coaxes him to go and help Erica. You know, it's like, if you're a chicken, you should go ahead and run away because this thing feeds on fear. But Erica's going to need your help, so you should do something about it. Otherwise, she's going to die. And so um, we cut to Tommy and Erica in the cave. Um, Erica's trying to kind of talk Tommy down. Tommy's not listening. Uh, she turns on the chainsaw, pushes him out of the way, gets a good swipe at the creature's leg to take it down for a second. Um, Tommy sees the blood, but doesn't see the monster. So he's kind of panicking here. He doesn't know what's going on. And um, he thinks it's some kind of trick. You know, he thinks that she's messing with him and she's telling him he's not. Uh, Tommy tries to take a couple more shots. He takes some shots. It hits the monster and just kind of pisses it off. Um, and then he takes another wild shot as Eric is kicking the gun out of his hand. And then uh, they pretty much hear, you know, the voice, a voice saying, I just wanted to help as um, they see... James walk in and he's been shot. Um, Tommy kind of panics in. And me too, Erica punched him, winded him. Uh, she goes over to um, James taking his jacket off because she's just like, you know, try not to scream. I need to get the jacket off of you. It has the blood on it. The monster can smell you. She just pretty much tells him as long as he can be quiet that she can keep him alive. Um, Tommy's still kind of uh, panicking. And... Um, this is where they hear the voice of another child, and they find a, another child um, named Bien that is actually still alive, that has been there for longer than any of the others. Erica said she's not even on her list. And um, so now Erica's pretty much tasking Tommy, like, you need to get both of these kids out of here, while, uh, whereas uh, Tommy sees the dead body of his sister Sophie. Um, he kind of has, you know, once again, I mean, this is a lot going through him, but um, he has a panic moment. Erica pretty much says, we're running out of time. Uh, she says, you know, I, I don't want to do this to you, but, like, you have to see this thing. And she pretty much brings out this dagger that has a hilt that, uh, it's hoard gold from what she calls the House of Slaughter. And she's just like, I need you to see. And she pretty much cracks him in the side of the head with the dagger, the side, the, um, hilt of the dagger. And, you know, he's gets real mad there, he's freaking out, and then she apologizes, and then he gets this quick flash of these people sitting around a table and this old man who's kind of like the leader and sees the symbol that we've been seeing in his eye and then flashes back and he sees the monster um and then she pretty much still sends him you know she's like can you carry them both he says yes so she sends him out um to get the kids to safety um she pretty much just says <laughs> when she's done, she's going to burn the octopus because it, you know, kind of, it kind of led her into a trap and led James into a trap almost. Um, and then you get a cut with Tommy. Uh, you get a cool, cool, uh, full page of her fighting the creature one-on-one -on -one while Tommy gets the kids out. Um, Tommy gets to John, the officer who's kind of just like, you know, waking up and is stunned and is mad. But obviously John sees that the kids need help. Tommy's bleeding. He gets them uh, in the car. Everybody's talking kind of gibberish, and he's just like, you know, we have to, uh, let's get you guys out of here. So he pretty much, you know, hits the gas and um, he starts heading to his hospital. Uh, meanwhile, we get uh, a shot of Erica's bag with the octopus plushie sitting there, and you uh, hear the phone ringing in her bag. You see Erica come back all bloody, and she picks up the phone uh, saying, like, pretty much telling them like that she had she had to do what she had to do to save two lives and then she says she'll deal with the consequences later um and pretty much she's like you know she's like you're not listening to me that i was wasn't classified correctly it isn't a food stash it was a nest um and she's just like it, you know infuriated she says uh it was a mother Aaron. then she's like you know it had children those children are out and now they're hungry if this town is going to survive we're going to have to kill them and fast. And then you kind of uh, end on that with Erica. And now her group that's, you know, with her knowing that uh, the monster is down, but the monster has children. So 
and then they're left to face that in the next volume. So that is issue one, or volume one of Something is Killing the Children. Um, I still recommend, you know, this is just a brief summary. I still recommend you picking it up and reading it if you get a chance. But uh, obviously, like I said, if you don't have a chance, um, yeah, this will be cool. Um, I'm going to start trying to do this every week. Um, and this gives me a good chance to reread through this because I'm not quite caught up yet. I'm through like the 20s. I think I'm issue 20. Um, and there's 37 issues right now. So, you know, this is five. The goal is to weekly do five a week, do a volume a week, and we'll get caught up together. So, yeah, guys. Uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you guys hanging around for this long for this. Um, if you enjoy this, definitely, like I said, leave me a comment. Let me know what you enjoyed, what you didn't enjoy. If, um, if there's more, you know, more stuff you would like. So, uh, as always, guys, I appreciate it. Um, keep reading comics. I'll see you guys in the next video of Back Issues.